to this webinar with Easy Equities and Satrix. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to join us. I'm Sean Keeling and I'll be your host for the day. Uh, today we'll be talking about the new Satrix Inclusion and Diversity ETF that lists on the JSC on the 11th of August. Uh, it's currently in an IPO state also, which is available um, until midnight tonight, but a bit more about that later. Today we have a very cool webinar where we have two guests joining us. The first is Sia Bolele. Uh, Numoya, a quantitative portfolio manager at Satrix. And today we're also joined by Kaleto Malepe, an environmental researcher with a focus on ESGs. And uh, he was also a retail investor with a particular interest in ETFs and obviously, of course, an easy uh, user. You know, it's always a very exciting day when you hear there's a, that there's a new ETF uh, getting listed on the JC. At the moment, we have 82 ETFs on the JC. And with this new Satrix one, as well, and as well as the New Signia one that's coming next week will be up at 84. Recently, it's almost like every month there's a new JS, uh, ETF coming, which is really lacquer. Um, just before I hand over to Sibolela, I would just like to welcome Kaletso, who we'll be talking to afterwards. So Kaletso, uh, thanks for joining us today, and it's really lacquer having you here. Thank you for having me, um, and I look forward to learning more about the, the ETF um, and just ESGs as a whole. Thank you. Awesome. Looking forward to our uh, dialogue later with Sia Bolela and seeing what we can delve into this ETF with him. Um, so again, if you are looking for a recording of this ETF, this uh, webinar, which will be recorded, just head over to Easy ETFs, the webinar page there where it will be. And uh, please make sure when you ask questions ab about the Sia Bolela's presentation, please put them in the question answers box and we'll get to them afterwards. Please don't put them in the chat box. Please put them in the questions and answers box. So enough about me talking, let's head over to the brains of the conversation. Over to you, Sibalela. Thanks, uh, Sean, and uh, thanks guys for hosting us. Um, I'm quite uh, keen to speak about the index and how it's constructed in the, in the ETF that we are planning to list um, in the next coming weeks in August and um, how it's constructed and how um, we see it going to the market. Very happy to take questions at the end. Um, so I think <clears throat> just for a start, I just want to share my screen here. I'm hoping it's coming through. We, we can see um, Perfect. Perfect. Um, we, I mean, Satrix has come up with, uh, I think, a one-of-a-kind ETF, which is quite exciting because um, we want to list this uh, ETF with companies that actually demonstrate and also promote inclusion and diversity. So that's quite a very important uh, conversation in the South African context and also globally. And I think Satrix has, has done a, a pretty good job in takes, trying to take a step in terms of where we would like uh, investors to, to, to put their money in. So as a start, <clears throat> I just wanna explain again on the, the ETF um, and this is the ETF that will be tracking this index. And what do you guys do? Um, what you expect from it. So, um, so the fund will obviously be an ETF and um, it's only gonna hold JSE listed companies. So there's nothing outside that. You won't see any Apples or Google shows in there. So it's only listed companies in the South Africa um, JSE <coughs> exchange. The other part is we, <coughs> we weight each stock in there um, using its free float market cap but we max out each stock at 10%. So that's our cap. So we won't go over 10%. And we also have a capping in terms of the sectors. So we don't we won't go above 30% of the sectors. Um, and then the maximum number of, of stocks held by the ETF will be 30. So we, we won't go over that every time we do the rebalancing. And the index that this ETF will be tracking is the Refinitive uh, Cetrix South Africa IND index. Um, so I'll speak to the details of how that is constructed, um, but it is a it is a collaboration with Refinitiv. And then um, once this list, uh, the, the JSE code will be SDX ID. Um, if you want to check out um, what the performance is going forward, and then the distribution of its income will be quarterly, and then the rebalancing will be done twice a year, end of March and also end of September. So just uh, a quick illustration of how the index that this ETF will be tracking is constructed. 
So as a start, we're only looking at the JSE listed companies as mentioned. Um, and then the second part is removing illiquid stocks and small stocks. This helps in terms of trading and also the construction as well, uh, because it, it's quite, it's, it's not easy to actually have an ETF that is trading in illiquid stocks. So uh, it, it gives for a more, much quicker way of trading the, the ETF. The other part is we measure the inclusion and diversity part. So we score each company on inclusion and diversity. We use four pillars for this, and I'll explain this further. So that feed into the process and also enable us to actually calculate the score for each company. Um, and then the next part is, um, yeah, so those pillars are actually inclusion, um, diversity, people's development, and also we also look at news and controversies that have to do with um, inclusion and, and diversity. And then the, the, the next part is once we've got a score for each company, we rank all the scores that we have. Um, and then the top 30 companies which have the highest uh, IND score or <clears throat> will make up the, the, the index and then the ETF will check that index. Um, and then lastly, to actually create the index, we since we've ranked the top 30, now to actually create the weights, we use the, the free float market cap and we also kept that at, at um, 10%. So what, what's important is we have pillars, um, four pillars, but what, what is actually feeding to these, these pillars that enable us to actually um, create a, a standard measurement for, for this index. So there's four pillars, diversity, inclusion, people's development, and also the, the news and controversies. Um, so the first step first is you can look at uh, diversity. So this pillar looks at if a company has policies about diversity processes and objectives, um, while it also focuses on the gender diversity as well from um, manager, um, exec level, um, board of directors up to the normal um, or just the, the, the regular staff in the, in the company. And then also, um, so that, that takes care of the, of the diversity part um, and we create a score uh, using these metrics for diversity. And then the next part will be the inclusion one. And this is the most important one because um, a lot of the uh, products which are similar to, to what we, uh, we are um, talking about now, they tend to focus more on the diversity where they will look at the products which look at how, for instance, how many women are um, are employed in the company and then that'll be it, but they never touch on the inclusion part. So this is quite important, especially in the South African, in the South African context. Um, so this pillar looks at policies put in place for, for previously disadvantaged groups by checking if the company promotes any flexible hours, um, any daycare services. Um, and then the other part is any policies that have to do with HIV AIDS. Um, and also quite important is um, we also look at whether um, the company promotes diversity also in the ownership. So we, look, we use the overall B scoring. And I need to mention that when we calculating the score for this inclusion, um, the B scoring takes 50% of the weight when calculating um, all the scores. So it's quite, it's quite huge in the inclusion part. And it's quite unique in the South African context because you don't have that in the global um, uh, measurements as well. Um, the other part is the third one is people's development. So focuses on companies that elevate people by having skills training, internal promotions, um, programs for career development as well, and a collection of service which will tell uh, whether um, there's, there's any employee satisfaction. In there. And then the last one would be the, the, the news and controversy pillar. So the, we're looking at companies which have had controversies reported on them and they will be penalized, not necessarily taken out of the index. And this is news on working conditions, uh, wages, diversity, and, and opportunity stories. So each of these pillars will, create, will have a score and then we will take that average and create the, um, the total of official IND score. So for instance, you can see that this is the top 10 um, companies that are in the indexes of as, uh, as at the end of March, um, and I've, I've uh, sorted these according to the official uh, inclusion and diversity score. So you can see that we can score each of these pillars for each of these companies and then take the average and get the official IND. 
then after that we weight that using the free float weight. So this is the measure for each of these stocks um, coming out, um, and, and that's the top ten that you will get from the index. Um, and, and and the other part is we one of the reasons what that we actually created is this index is that um, there is uh, evidence and research out there that companies which um, focus a lot on inclusion and diversity tend to perform better than their peers. And we've done the back test for this where we created the index from 2009. And you can see that this dark blue line here is actually the index, which is um, the inclusion and diversity index that we, this ETF will be tracking. And then this is a much broader all share index uh, performance over that here. And you can see that there is, there is um, it does show that there is um, outperformance from these fund from these companies that are focusing more on inclusion and diversity um, over that over the long term, and um, they do have also a an equity um, return profile. And I think that's that's quite important as well. Um, if you're having a theme, and then also looking at whether there is some sort of return as well. So I think I think I think that part is quite important to just highlight in terms of how we construct it and whether. I mean, there is show of any um, return um, on, on the portfolio or the index um, historically. And I think this is, Citrix is bringing a, a, to the market an ETF that tracks the, this index, which provides exposures to companies that uh, value inclusion and diversity in the workplace. Um, and, and I think the ETF is created in such a way that it is, it is managed nicely in terms of it's passive and also it's systematic. Um, which we are rebalancing it twice a year, um, and we are rebalancing to data that we have um, as close as possible to to when it was public as well. Um, and then also, I think going forward, there's also a lot of metrics that we would love to actually have in there um, that will speak more in terms of what we want to focus on in the South African context. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can put in there. For instance, things like mental health uh, policies. Um, so we would like to actually have those coming into as a measure as well. And also employment in the LGBTI community and many more. Um, but I think as a first uh, step at the problem, this is a, is a very good start. And we also hope that the ETF will drive companies to actually realize the importance of inclusion and diversity and also start reporting the data as well because we need the data to actually um, have the companies um, included in the index. Yeah, and I think that's it from my side. Thanks so much for, for the presentations here. Yeah? And it really is a, a new, exciting uh, and different ETF, which is which is really cool for South Africa. And like you said, it'll be interesting to see what companies start focusing on it from this ETF also, which is, is really lacking. Um, just before um, I hand over to Kales, before I know she has some questions that she wants to ask you. Um, if if you guys have any questions, please pop them in the question and answer box and we'll get to them uh, just now. Um, again, just before I answer to Kles, I just want to ask you, uh, Sibulela, what, what is the total expense ratio for this ETF? Um, that's, I actually don't, I didn't calculate that. Um, but I mean, it's got, it's got some of the top, top 40 companies in there, um, but it's not a lot of them at the same time. But it, and in terms of the, the free float market, uh, market cap, it's quite, it's quite um, a, um, a measurable um, percentage versus the, the total market, but um, I'm happy to supply those numbers afterwards um, in terms of where that is, whether to see whether this index is actually cheaper than where we are in terms of the market. Yeah, perfect. Uh, over to you, Claes. I know you said before, and you got some. You can't wait to ask see if there's some questions. <laughs> yeah, I think my question was more around the total expense ratio, but I also just wanted to ask. Um, firstly, the, um, congratulations. I think this is a amazing um, ETF and it's definitely going to be a game changer in South Africa. But I wanted to just ask, are there any plans um, within the Cetrix team to introduce another ESG ETF that focuses on the whole ESG metrics instead of just focusing on the inclusion and diversity side of things? Are there any plans or the pipeline where we would have, you know, an ESG focused ETF that's um, brought by Cetrix and focus on just the South African stocks? Hmm. Okay. Um, sorry, firstly, let me just go back to the total expense ratio. I just realized that um, I was thinking about another ratio, which 
Um, so just going back there, we, we do have a, a targeted uh, expense, um, target um, expense uh, ratio on this, um, total expense ratio on this. And that is about, that is around 46 bips or 0 0.46. And this is largely based on the fact that um, the, the stocks are actually ranked using the score and then eventually they are weighted using the market cap. So you have this in and out of some companies, sometimes they will have controversial news and then eventually the company is taken out. So sometimes you take out a big weight and then you have to buy into another one. So there's quite a lot of turnover in the portfolio and the rebalancing is, is done twice a year. Actually, every time we do the rebalancing, March and in September, there's, a, there's, there's around 45, 47% turnover um, on the portfolio, um, which brings about where the, the, the targeted expense, um, total expense ratio is. So the actual total expense ratio will only come out in a year's time. Um, when the, the, the ETF has been there for um, uh, around for a year. Um, so this is at the moment is only, is only the targeted expense ratio, which is currently we're sitting at about 40, 0 0.46. And then on your question um, on, um, okay, let's go on, the, on, the, on the products uh, development, I mean, this is, uh, the, we've got research in the pipelines in terms of where we want to be um, regarding ESG. Um, and there's, there's, there's a lot of things that we're doing in the, in the uh, product development as well, looking at that. And we, we already have the ESG on a global sense, um, but we also want to actually look at whether um, we can provide um, a South African ESG, whether it's an ETF or comes in the form of a unit trust. Um, so um, we, we are looking into that. Um, and there's quite a lot of difficulty when it comes to um, things like ESG, because you, you're talking about the data in there. Um, you also want to test a strategy over some time. So the coverage um, going 10, 10, 10 years back, it's quite, it's quite difficult, difficult actually um, to get and also uh, maintain that if you've got a result from that data, it's, 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 uh, it's reliable. So, um, but we are, we are working in, in, in trying to get a product in the South African context on that. Um, so with, with the rebalancing, um, should it happen that one of the companies fall off the wagon and um, fails the scoring um, system that you have in place, will you then remove it and put a company that's more qualified? Um, how, how will the rebalancing work? Yeah, so as I mentioned, at the beginning, we look at all the stocks that are listed on GSE, and then we filter down using the liquidity part. So when we do that liquidity part, we, we get to around 110 stocks, 120 stocks. And then we, we're actually able to actually do the measurements on the IND, and then we rank that and get the top 30. So there'll always be other stocks which are below the, the top 30 that are waiting to actually go in there. It's the same as when we're doing the rebalancing for top 40, for instance, or um, any other um, ETF. So if a company which was in the index now, which is in the index now, for instance, let's say Woolies is in there, and then at, when we're doing the rebalancing now in September, suddenly there was, uh, there's, there's news and controversies that got to do with the company, or it's scoring quite low on any of the pillars, and it doesn't qualify to be ranked into the top 30, then that company is going to be dropped from the index. And then another one will be brought in based on the scores and, and rankings as well. Thanks, Evelilla. I see a few questions uh, around about if the ETF is already available on Easy Equities. It's, it's only available, it only lists on the JC on the 11th of August, and it's currently in an IPO state. That's an initial private offering state, a uh, public offering, sorry. Um, which closes tonight. So if you do want to get, if you do like what Sibla is talking about and you want to get involved in the ETF, um, you can head over and buy it before midnight tonight. Uh, yeah, I did see a question about what you think the price would be of the ETF when it lists and what the price is of the IPO. So I don't know if you've got any thoughts around that. Um, yeah. yeah. So when, when you're doing, a, when you're doing a, a price calculation for any ETF, you 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 base that on the fact that how much how much you want from uh, well I'm talking about the administrative part where you're looking at the basket size and also um, and you're looking at the price of the index as well um, so I think a, a price that's in in around 
based on the on the level of the of the pools. I mean, if you're looking at the price level at the moment, it's around uh, um, 270 or so, and the the level of the index when we were um, launching it. So the price might be around um, in the 20s, um, the way that we've created it, um, based on the index level as well. And I think we we would that will be based on how we did on the IPO as well. And, uh, and I mean, I don't want to stick to a final price that will come out, um, but we'll see after the IPO and when we do list it. Um, one of the question is around diversity. Um, it's, um, it says that they didn't see that um, disability mentioned um, in types of diversity that will be taken into consideration. Um, why is that the case? Is disability also gonna be considered um, when looking at inclusion and diversity as well? Sorry, sorry, so can you just repeat the question again, sorry? Oh, the question is around disability um, in terms of like when you look at the diversity of the companies. Right. Um, are you yes. going, yeah. Is that something that is also going to be considered when you... Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, employment of, uh, of um, people with disabilities or special needs is actually considered in the inclusion pillar. Um, so the inclusion pillar also has a metric there. Um, and we look at uh, the percentage of people um, with disabilities employed by the company. So the higher that percentage is, the better the company will score. Uh, for instance, Woolies is about, I think, 1.2, I think, approximately, as a percentage of uh, the total employees there. And I think NetBank also is about 3% in there. So that's actually one of the metrics, which is quite important, the inclusion um, pillar that goes into the into the total measure of the inclusion and diversity. Thanks, Evelyn. What's the risk profile of this ETF? Yeah. So from from that chart, you, from that chart that I showed in terms of the um, the equity performance or the equity um, performance profile, you can see that it's actually almost doing the same in terms of the volatility as well uh, compared to 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 the all share. Um, so. The risk is, is that since you are actually investing in local equities um, and you're looking at comparing it to other equity ETF, so, so those will be the same in terms of the scale of the risk. And I think any equity ETF has been ranked as um, top of the spectrum in terms of, of the risk profile. So anyone who's looking at investing for uh, a much longer term same as any other equity um, ETF, I think that that would be the ETF for them. It's, it's, it's definitely not for um, any short-term returns, um, especially if you're looking at the equity exposure. Um, one of the questions is around dividends. Um, well, can investors expect to receive dividends from this? And if yes, what's the expected dividend yield um, and how will it work? Yeah, so the dividends are actually distributed um, on this ETF, uh, quite similar to the, to the other um, local ETFs that we have. Um, I, I don't have the expected actual uh, dividend that we can expect um, from, the, from the ETF, but you, they, there would be income which is distributed um, quarterly for the fund. Actually, we have quite a long question you're asking about um, how will Satrix, I'm just going to read it out here, how will Satrix yeah. ensure that the companies that they are tracking do not only have a good inclusion and diversity metrics, but also have an actual inclusive culture? It is essential from the culture of an organization that true performance comes. A company's growth will not have longevity if it is only its metrics that determines how diverse and inclusive it is. Yeah. So, um... I think the way that, the way that we've created the index is that we're not only looking at whether a company has certain policies, but we're also looking at um, metrics which are also measurable. Um, so the company can certainly say that no, we do have a policy in, in diversity, but you, if you'd be looking at their numbers, it's not doing the same thing. So if they have policies in terms of um, employing of women in the company, we also have a metrics where we look at the recruitment of, of, uh, of, of new employees and see what is the percentage of women in that company that is coming into the company 
Um, so that's also feeding into there. And, um, and also we're looking at different levels of employment, whether it's, a, it's, um, it's a normal staff member up, up to the board, um, board of directors. And we're hoping that the, the, the level of, of, of gender diversity in there also translates into how the culture is into the company. There's certainly not, there's not um, a lot of things that you can guarantee in terms of having a product and also uh, relying on the data um, to actually create such a product. But um, there is um, some certainty that we have that looking at these numbers, those translate to a more diverse and also inclusive um, culture in, in, in a company. And that actually translates to the bottom line in terms of how the company is performing. And I think from that chart that I showed in terms of how the most, um, the highest companies in terms of inclusion and diversity versus its peers, they actually perform way better. So I think that's actually translating into the data as well. Thanks, yeah, before Kalissa goes again, I'll, we just have a question. If you could please share your screen again with the top 30 companies so that um, everyone can see that. And then while Sibelil is doing that, there's also a question asking how you invest in the RPO and Easy Equities. Once you logged into Easy Equities, um, on the top left of your screen, there'll be a menu bar. And under that, there'll be a new listings tab. So you click on that new listings tab, and then you can go and invest in it through there. It's also available in your ZAR and your TFSA account. We haven't touched on that. It's also available in your tax-free savings account as well. So on the screen, I only had the top 10, not the actual top 30. So yeah, that's what I have there. Um, does it, is it coming through on your side? Yes, we can see yeah. it. Cool. Um, was there a question on the top on the top ten, or do they just want to see? I think they just wanted to see it again. Yeah. See what's okay, in cool. it. Right. I'll just leave it at that. That slide. The other question was around um, the 10% cap. So the person was just asking for a bit more um, clarity, like how does it work? Um, what is the 10% cap? Um, and is it based on the company's capitalized value? Yeah, so once we've done the ranking of the scoring and then we have the top 30 companies, now we need to find a way to actually do the weighting. So um, the way that what we've chosen is actually go the free float market cap route um, so we use the market cap of each of those companies um, and then um, calculate that based on the top 30 uh, companies that we have, sorry, on the index. And then what we're trying to avoid is um, a lot of <clears throat> a big issue when you're looking at, sorry, at, at thematic investing is that sometimes you have a few companies which are very good at a certain theme. Um, and if their market cap is quite huge, then they're going to take up quite a lot of the of the index. So in order to make sure that we're taking care of concentration risk, we introduced those two caps that we put in, which is a 10% as a first, um, and all on each stock that we don't go over that. And then also that translates to trying to make sure that we don't have a bias on certain um, sectors of the market. So we put in the 30% as well, um, maximum in there. So that um, the index is not translating into, for instance, a, a high weight into one stock. And we think that um, inclusion and diverse companies actually perform better, while actually the reason why the index is performing very well is just that one stock. Thanks, Abilita. We have another question answering, asking if the rebalancing is done twice a year, how are corporate events dealt with? For example, the standard liberty mon minority offer. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the corporate actions would be sort of like the standard way of any other ETF that is out there. So the rebalance is gonna be done twice a year, but in between, I mean, if there's a spin-off or there's a corporate action that's got to do with an index deletion, I mean, with a, with a company deletion or an unlisting, that will be um, um, traded at, depending on what the, the information that we have um, at that at that point, um, so if, for instance, there is a spin-off of, uh, of a new company, uh, let's say Woolies has a spin-off of, uh, of another company in it, so it comes out and it's actually held by the index. That company will sit in there, 
and will be deleted once the, the sorry will be deleted when we actually doing the rebalancing again. Try, because we're trying to avoid um, too many uh, too much trading in, in between between the, the, the rebalancing. So corporate actions will be um, certainly um, dealt with the same as any other ETF that that um, we have listed. Um, another question is saying, what are the benefits of buying these shares before IPO closes as opposed to buying after? So I think one of the, uh, the best part about going into an IPO is you, you get a first price that no one else is also in the index. People are actually, <clears throat> other people are actually slow in terms of catching on what products, new products are out there. So if you go into the IPO, firstly, you also save on your, uh, of your, on your brokerage as well. Um, and also you get the first price when it lists, it's listing at that price. And if, it, if, it, if, it, if the index does well, at least you, were, you went in very early. So I think that's, what, that's, that's, what, that's the one big advantage of going to an IPO. Thanks, Gabriela. We just have one more question here, asking about what the weight column in this um, table refers to. Yeah. Okay. So, as I mentioned, um, so what we do is for each for each sorry, for each stock, we would have the four pillar um, scores, and then what we would do is we would take the the average of these four scores and create the official ID. And then we rank all the stocks that we have and then create, I mean, have a, an, an index that has 30 stocks. Now you need a way to actually wait, have weights of the stocks in the index. So what we do is we create uh, the, the weights by using the, the free float market cap of each of these stocks. So what translates from that is that Woolies will be weighted at 5.4 um, of the entire um, of the entire ETF based on its free float market cap. And our uh, net bank will be 6.4 of that. Uh, British American tobacco is probably higher than this, but there is a capping that I mentioned that of 10%, so it will be capped at 10%. And then eventually, if we look at all the 30 stocks and we add up all these percentage weights, they will add up to 100%. So that is the percentage weight of each of the stock in the ETF or in the index that the ETF will be tracking. Um, the other question was around what's the meaning of official IND score? I'm assuming IND stands for inclusion and diversity. Yes, right? so that, that is the official um, inclusion and diversity score that we, you get once you take the average of the four pillars. And that is the score that is assigned to each of the companies that we use to actually rank the companies to get the actual um, ETF. Uh, thanks, Gabriela and Kalesa. I don't know if we have any, I don't see any more questions really coming through. So I don't know if um, I have any closing comments um, or if anyone has any questions, I can pop them through quickly. We'll give you a, um, one or two minutes or we'll do some closing comments and then end it there. Well, for my one, so I would just like to ask, I know Kalesa asked about ESG ETFs. I mean, and you commented on that. What other ETFs do you have on the horizon for this year? Um, and what, what are the exciting things you have coming up? So I think the, the most exciting part um, that we've seen in the ETS space is that a lot of thematic investment um, ETS are coming into the, into, the, into the market. So we're also diving into that space. Um, obviously, some of these ETFs are still in the works, so uh, I, I can't really disclose the, the actual um, fund names and what indices that we'll be tracking. But certainly in the thematic side and also looking at international markets as well, because there's quite a lot of appetite in terms of uh, offshore um, equities in South Africa, because people want to diversify their, their, their savings. So we're also going to be tapping into that. We're also having a look at a very interesting ETF that we want to launch that's also South, South African based as well. Um, and, and looking at that ETF in the sense that we think um, a lot of our institutional clients and also retail clients want to tap into um, because it also offers the, the, the diversification part as well and um, also gives you a very nice broad exposure to, to, to the market. 
So those are coming into, and also we also want to look at country focused um, um, ETFs as well, because those, those tend to also speak a lot in terms of if people want to invest um, on, in, the, in, the, in the East more than the West, then they have products which are available for, for investing. So those, those are coming, coming through, but um, as, as, as time goes, you guys will see what, what we have in offer. Awesome, very exciting. It's also, um, you guys have a wide range of ETFs, so it's exciting that you get new and diverse ETFs come in. That's really like Yeah. Kalitza, so I don't know if you have any closing comments. Uh, not really, uh, but I just wanted to say this is a great um, initiative by Cetrix, and I hope that we will get to see more um, of this kind of products coming in soon, uh, especially the ones that are focused on the whole ESG metrics, um, rather than just focus on the inclusion and diversity side of things. But um, I wish you and your team all the best, um, and I hope that it, it, it's a great success. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I, I hope it's going to be... Um... Because one of the aims for the product is also bring about conversation into the market as well. So we're kind of quite excited to actually have this kind of product where people can also talk about um, and excited that uh, we have created a very nice initiative, both from uh, a conversation part and also from the investor part as well. Um, so thank you very much. And, and it's quite exciting to have this product. Awesome. Thank, thank you so much to you, and to you, Kaletsa, for joining us today. Um, the, the, I really enjoyed the chat and I learned a lot about it. I'm definitely going to log in and buy some uh, on my IPO, but um, that's just me. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to you guys for your stay. Thank you to everyone else for taking time with you to join us. We hope you learned a lot. And uh, remember, it's in an IPO until midnight tonight, and then it lists yeah. on the 11th of August. Thank you. Hey, thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye. So easy, so easy